Hello and welcome back to Microcap Tutorials. My name is Paul. We're going to be going over sine wave voltage offsets uh, and the transient analysis for that, alternate symbolic methods, and sine wave uh, parameterization. So first we're going to talk about this symbol. So in, in the last episode we had our amplitude voltage at 5 and our frequency at 100. But if we want to connect this more to the mathematical uh, or the, the math expression of um, of this kind of thing is you're going to you're going to start with the equation. So if you type in parameterized sine, it's going to look like this. Like if you type into Google, you're going to see that. And uh, A is the amplitude voltage. B is a the inverse of the period or 2 pi f. And you have horizontal shifts H and K. Now, uh, this is just the most generic way of representing this, and that's what the graph looks like. But if we want to move this more into a voltage understanding or use this sign for a voltage application, then we're going to have to rename some things to make have it make more sense. So V sub 1 of T, that's the voltage source that we've been using. We've been calling it V sub 1. So we're going to make that consistent. And then we have the amplitude voltage, uh, V sub A, uh, 2 pi F. And then this is a time simulation. And there's a time delay, which is what the, the H, the um, horizontal shift is. And then K is going to be our vertical offset or our, our voltage or um, our voltage shift offset or bias. Now, uh, I, I will write generally all three of these in paragraph form because this last term is called different things. So mathematicians like to call it a shift because it, it functionally shifts uh, the graph up or down. Yeah, but in the engineering world, I tend to prefer offset or bias or a calibration value, something of that nature, uh, because that's that's more along the lines of what we're using it for. So the voltage source function, once we have done the naming, is going to resolve to something like that, where we had A, it's now V sub A, where we had B, it was 2 pi F, where we had H, uh, it was T sub D, and where we had K, it's V sub 0 now. And so um, in this particular example, we're not really going to care about the delay. So that delay is going to go away. Now we just have 2 pi f. So uh, this just shows you these are the factors uh, that we are modifying whenever we go into a sine source, v sub 0, v sub a, and frequency, or f sub 0 in this example. Now, I've heard, I've heard people call the last term v sub 0 or v naught. It sort of depends on the circumstances of where you are. Uh, if you're in an academic setting or you're with, you're with people who spend most of their time in pure math uh, or engineering, but I will tend to use v sub 0 um, as, as, its, as its moniker or as its, its descriptor. So uh, that's, that's kind of how we're going to be doing it. All right, so let's get into the offsets now. Uh, so we're going to talk about that V sub 0 value now. So the reason why you might want to do this, if you go into transient, and we do our simulation like we did before, we have we have a nice sine wave that goes from 0 and then plus 5 to minus 5, and then the output of the resistor divider or voltage divider network is 2.5 to minus 2.5. And that's great for an analog circuit, but if you were doing this with a digital circuit, and you might want to you know shape this to something that looks a little bit more square, uh, this might create a problem because that that digital input may not be able to handle um, reverse uh, voltages, especially if you don't have reverse polarity protection, uh, some type of circuit or diode or however you end up doing it. So what would you need to do to the signal in order to make it acceptable to a digital input? Well, we might want to raise it up. So we might make the lowest value that it can possibly be a zero volt. So that's what the offsets are for if you're trying to simulate that. So if I just add 5 volts, it's going to raise the entire graph up by 5. And that could be good. But we might also encounter the fact that, oh, shoot, now we have an overvoltage condition because now everything is going up to 10 volts instead of to 5. So if you want to, if you want to fix that, you're going to go in here and then just divide everything by half. So or divide everything by 2. So now the signal should only go up to 5 volts for the input and then you have the output at 2.5. Uh, if you were doing some type of um, conversion circuitry that is higher voltage and then now you're interacting with a microprocessor or microcontroller that has a lower voltage, sometimes resistor dividers are used for that purpose. Now there's other things that they add to them like zeners to clamp voltages and diodes for reverse polarity protection, but this is essentially what you're doing when you're lowering voltages. So anyways, it goes up from 5 volts, goes to 0, so okay, great, this would probably be acceptable. Uh, now, there's um, there's another way of doing this. So if you want to have an offset voltage, 
uh, but you want to represent it uh, symbolically instead of parametrically, then you can add a cell and then say this is 2.5. And we're going to wire the rest of it up. And this will do effectively the same thing. It's going to put a DC bias on this, uh, the sign source. So we should expect the same graph when we run this simulation again. There you go. Looks the same. Uh, now, but in the, in the real world, this may not be practical because you, you especially if, if these values are you know, sufficiently low, like one ohm or something like that, we were using 10 ohm resistors at this particular thing. It doesn't really matter unless you really care about the current. So if, if power or current becomes an issue, this is, this is going to be a problem because you have essentially 5 amps now. Five, you know, the signal goes up to 5 volts, and so 5 divided by 1 ohm is going to be 5 amps. So uh, you, have, like, you have a problem here because now you have 5 amps that are running through the cell. And if you looked up, like, I don't know, if you, if you had stacked two AA batteries to sort of get this effect, uh, they may not be able to handle 5 amps running through them, and they may heat up and then explode on you. So just keep that in mind as you're doing things, that if you're going to do this kind of strategy, especially if it's at the signal end, which is typically how you would do this kind of thing, to make sure that those resistances are sufficiently high so that the current that you're going through is going to be in uh, low milliamps or microamps instead of... Um, uh, instead of in amps. So just two ways of doing it. You can represent it parametrically or you can represent it uh, symbolically. Um, typically when people are looking at these at a glance it's better to have things symbolic because you can get more information without having to dig deeper because most people don't have time to dig deeper. So just keep that in mind.